So today I'm going to show you how I would build back broken tines. This deer has a broken brow tine and then a broken tine that would come out uh, out into here. This guy actually has a lot of trail camera pictures of this deer where the tines were not broken. So I have that as reference. I can use that. Uh, if you don't, a lot of times I'll just try and match the other side or in this case where it's an abnormal point. You can typically look at the base of the tine and it'll give you a pretty good indication on whether it was just a little sticker or whether it was actually a tine. This one here has got a pretty good sized base and the picture shows that it would have came out into here. Uh, a lot of people don't like building back tines. Uh, they say you should you leave it the way you shot it. Some deer actually look a lot better once you do build the tines back. Um, and in this case, the guy had pictures so he knows exactly what they were. Uh, but it'll just make it look more symmetrical from one side to the other, like with this broke brow, it just kind of throws the rack off. One thing to keep in mind when you do this, especially if you're a taxidermist doing this, uh, once you alter these antlers, it can't be scored for the scoring system if you're wanting to put it in the Boone and Crockett or something of that nature. Make sure you know and the customer knows that once you start drilling into this and building back, they're not going to allow you to put it in the books. Uh, but yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drill holes in both parts where the tine is going to be built back. Then I'll put a wire in here. Um, I'll glue the wire in, just help support the epoxy. And then I'll be using a two-part epoxy. Uh, get the same parts of A and B, mix them together, and we'll put it on there. We'll give that epoxy about 24 hours to dry. Once it gets set up and hard, we'll come in, kind of sand it up, rough it up, and then we'll go ahead and put our stain on there. So let's get started. All right, so I've got my drill bit that I'm gonna use to drill into this, uh, and I'll try and drill as center as I can. And then I've got my two wires here. I always make the wire longer than what it's gonna be. Uh, and then I'll come back and cut that off. And when you do cut it off, I wanna cut it off a little bit short, uh, trying to make that point like what this tine has. If that wire goes all the way to the end of that, it's about the same size. So you're gonna be able to see that wire. It's hard to get it just right. And if you leave it the exact length, as you get that point on there, then you're gonna be making it longer. So I'll normally drop back about a quarter to a half inch on what I actually want that length to be and just let the epoxy hold that. So I've got the two wires. This is a 10 gauge wire. Uh, depending on the length, you can go longer or shorter. I like to go a little smaller uh, so that it's easier to bend. If you go with something harder, then you're prying on the, the actual hole that you drilled. So it can end up wallowing that hole out a little bit and making it be loose. I like to go a little bit smaller because it allows me to bend that wire freely. Uh, on this brow, you probably could get away with just building that back, but I want something there that'll help hold it uh, just in case somebody accidentally grabs it there or when you're taking it down, putting it up, if it gets you know hit on or something, it's not just gonna break that epoxy clean off. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and drill these holes. Now that I've got the holes drilled, um, I'm going to take a pair of pliers, take my wire and where it's going to be down in that hole, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of rough that up, put some little grooves and dents in it. Uh, that'll give that wire and glue and antler a little bit better bond. So it'll just put, like I said, just kind of some some rough texture on there. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but you can see how it's just got like some little grooves in there. That'll help the super glue bond. Uh, I really like the Gorilla Glue Super Glue Gel. Um, it works really good. It's a gel, so it's not a liquid. It doesn't run all over the place. Uh, if you want to put something down over top of this deer to keep it from getting on there, you can, but we're just going to apply the Gorilla glue to the wire. So somehow the video messed up whenever I was doing the wires. But anyway, I was just showing that you put the super glue on the wire, put it down in the hole, and then I drive it in a little bit with a hammer uh, just to get it to go down in there all the way and even kind of set into that bone a little bit. And then do the same thing on the other wire. And I actually bent this wire kind of how it's going to go. Um, 
based off of those trail camera pictures that he has. So we're to that point now where this is dried up. We'll go ahead and cut these off and get ready to start doing the epoxy. So if you'll get this head somewhat level, uh, you can use another piece of wire or something of that nature, string, or you can just eyeball it. Most time I'll just eyeball it, but just get it kind of close. Uh, make sure you've got your bends in it if you need to. And we'll go ahead and cut that off. Probably cut that off somewhere right in here. Put a little bit of a bend at the top because we're gonna start angling that way because of this. Um, and now we'll just build back over top of that with epoxy and make it match into here. Same way on this one, this one lines out uh, from the pictures, you're kind of middle ways between there. So I'll drop in here, bend that just a little bit, we'll cut that off like that. And then the epoxy will come all the way out and we'll build a little bit of tip off of that. So now we're ready to mix the epoxy up. This is Epoxy Sculpt by ABS. Um, I really like it. This is white, they have gray. Uh, there's other companies that have colored you can go ahead and get that if you know, um, like around the eyes and stuff, you're gonna be doing black. I don't prefer to do it that way. I like having the gray and then painting. That way it shows me what I've painted and what I hadn't. But you're just gonna get, this is part B. You're gonna get a little ball out. You're gonna be getting 50 of 50, so 50 of B and 50 of A uh, percentage wise. So you kind of look at it. If you look at this, this is gonna be plenty. So I can probably drop back a little bit, but I'll throw away whatever I don't use. Or if you've got a deer in here that you're needing to put epoxy around the eyes or something, once you get done with however much you need, you could use it on that. Uh, but you get two balls about the same amount, and then you're just gonna mix that together. Uh, you can see the gray and you can see the white. Once you get to where you don't see any more of that gray, then you know you've got it mixed all the way together. You can use water, you can use rubbing alcohol, um, anything like that to help smooth this out some, make it where it mixes a little better. It gets a little sticky if you don't use some kind of moisture. Um, so sometimes rubbing alcohol is a good thing to use on it, helps smooth it out. I just mix that up really good to where you're not seeing any of the gray or the straight white. Uh, and then once you get that done, we'll start sculpting this back. And as you can see, that'll be plenty to build back uh, the brow that we need. So now that we've done that, I'll just slide this on here. Once you get this stuff wet, anything you touch is gonna get that white to it. So I try and minimize driving up here or anything um, because it's gonna be on there. And once it sets up, it's pretty hard to get it off. So I just start putting it on there, building that thickness up to where it matches. I always start at the bottom and work my way towards the top. And then you can sand some of this off if you get it a little bit too thick. I try to get it a little too thick if I'm gonna do it one way or the other, just so it can be sanded off. Uh, if you make it too thin, then you gotta come in and try and add all that on there. And I don't like it being thin if it's gonna be added. Uh, it just seems to be a lot weaker. So try and add too much and then sand down if you need to. But you're basically just sculpting that to make it match that opposite side. On brow tines, a lot of times I'll try and do them very similar to the other side, even with pictures, just because it's going to make it look a lot more symmetrical. Uh, makes it where it's harder to notice. On this tine out here, I'll follow that to the spec of what that trail camera picture looks like. Now that I've got that really close, I'll come back in and drop some epoxy on there to build these bumps up. And then I'll use a modeling tool to come back around and really shape that stuff up and make sure all that stuff's pretty smooth. But I just pinch off little pieces. I'll put them in there just so I'm not taking away from the thickness if I try and build that back with the modeling tool itself. And then with the modeling tool, I'll try and build those, those grooves up uh, like what we have on this side, put indentions in there uh, and do all that good stuff. You 
So now that we've got this brow tine built back, we're gonna go ahead and get started on this tine. Again, equal parts. We're gonna go ahead and mix that together. And then we'll just start working on that tine. <clears throat> Again, start at the bottom, work your way up. Got that wire cut about where I want it. Want that point to end up somewhere right in here. Uh, so go ahead and get this mixed up and then we'll get to forming. Got this mixed up good. We'll go ahead and start this down here at the base. Try and get that transition made into the bone, the antler that's already there. Once I get that, then I'll just work that point out. And I built a lot of texture on this brow. These tines out like this, they don't really have a whole lot of texture to them. I'll put a little bit of the grooves and lines that are in there, but for the most part, they're typically pretty smooth. Uh, you'll see different things on different deer, but they're normally pretty smooth. So I'll make it the same way. Just trying to match these antlers back up. You know, I want it to look the same. So now it's been 24 hours. Uh, we're coming back in. We've made both of the points and I'll use sandpaper and then I have some of these little files. We'll just kind of go in here and try and smooth that transition from the old antler into the epoxy. Same on this one and then maybe put a few little small grooves, build them in there. Uh, just try and get everything where it looks really realistic uh, to the way it should have been had he not broke the, the points off. Just be careful when you use anything uh, to sand this stuff down, to groove it out, do different things like that. Be sure when you use tools, uh, the grit is very high. You don't want a low grit sandpaper or tool uh, because it's gonna put big scars in it. And then you have to sand a lot of that epoxy off to get that changed out. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and sand this thing up and then we'll get ready for stain. Now that we've got it sanded up and kind of the way we want it, uh, I'm going to use this antler stain. This is, the color is raw umber. It's from Pinchback Reproductions. Uh, it's just a brush on, wipe off type stuff. You can dilute it with water to make it a little thinner if you need to. It's really good stuff. Um, I like it. I'll spray a matte finish over top of it once I get this the color that I want it. Uh, but you can just take a brush. Like I said, you can get some water if you need to thin it down. I'll put it on kind of heavy and then end up working it back down to try and match this color. Uh, they have several different colors that you can use. This one's typically the one that works best for the deer that I use. Um, when you do it though, sometimes you have to come over here and stain this one a little bit to try and make it match up. You just have to play with it and see what works best. But like I said, I'll put this on and then I'll grab a paper towel, wipe it down and then start kind of thinning that out to make all of it blend together. 